Hello and welcome to the Student Mission Podcast. My name is Mads. And I'm Ed. And we are part of the team here at Fusion. And as Fusion, we have a vision to see every student find hope in Jesus and a home in the local church. So tune in each episode as we chat to students from around the country and hear inspiring stories about how they are boldly living out their faith and sharing Jesus with their mates at uni. And we hope that by listening to this podcast, you feel inspired and equipped to reach those around you where you are whilst having a little bit of fun along the way. Well, hello and welcome to the Student Mission Podcast. We're going to be chatting to Jess, a student in Nottingham, a little bit later on in the episode. And she's been brilliant. She's been inviting her friends to church. She has been hosting dinner parties at her house. And she's just seen amazing transformation in the lives of her friends through building genuine friendships with them and inviting them along to come and see what God is doing in his church. It's a great interview. It's really good. But first, we're going to start the episode as we always love to start. And that is with a hot topic question about student life and the question for this week ed is have you ever skipped lectures and is it ever okay to skip lectures slash seminars any first immediate thoughts ed well i mean i often feel like when we talk about these topics i'm like the bad example okay yeah the worst case which is probably proven true i think so yeah i i mean like the base i was like no surely like i mean you shouldn't well, yeah, I think like ideally you go to every one, not just because that's more honouring or whatever to yeah. or whatever to your lecturers who've given up the time to you know teach that. And obviously, you know, uni costs a lot of money like yeah. down the line, so got to do that. But I got progressively worse over three years, okay. and kind of being like, I'd kind of go more for seminars. Okay. And even then, sometimes a bit hit and miss. But I did like an art subject where a load of it was just independent learning. And I you kind see. of just encouraged to be in the library. But yeah, I think there were some seminars, uh, sorry, lectures where I was like, yeah, I was I was like a ghost. You're just like, I won't be noticed anyway. Well, so. I think I just got out of the rhythm and I was like, I don't feel like there are any consequences yeah, to okay. this. But then there were some consequences. Were there, Ed? Well, yeah, I reckon a week before I finished my degree in my third year, got like a an email from like the history department being like your attendance has dropped below 50 percent yeah so and that must have been for seminars so like let alone the lectures and they were like you're going to get an academic penalty of like five percent <gasps> if you don't what they and if you that, don't go yeah unless you go and like apologize so yeah but 50 percent that's that's five, bad five. oh yeah, in, yeah 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 attention oh yeah no you were missing every sure. other and sometimes lecture. the lectures i came to i was late to as well so <sighs> yeah it was pretty poor it's a weird one isn't it because if you can still do your degree without it then you can get away with it but that's not the when we talk about um the importance of work in student link up videos which we do as fusion uh, we talk about the importance of honoring god really well in our work so that's the christian answer that's what we should all strive to do um whether we actually do or not is a whole different matter my parents are both teachers so i think i think it was instilled within me to not skip lectures and I didn't really I skipped maybe one or two but other than that I think I was just too scared to I was just too scared that I was gonna get in trouble I must have lost the fear factor (laughs) I think my parents tried to instill that in me I mean they've definitely I've said to them subsequently they've been ashamed (laughs) (laughs) they are ashamed I've got a voice note here from a student who is at university in London studying percussion and uh They're also my brother. So this is my brother's uh, response. (laughs) There we go. See if it (laughs) runs in the family. Oh, yeah. Let's see what he has to say. Uh, Is it okay to skip? Uh, I think it's not really, but it's one of those that it's like nobody dies. If you do, particularly, I think if you've got like another excuse, you know, behind on another assignment or something. uh, How often? I think... If you want to stop yourself getting into a bit of trouble and, you know, not having a clue what's going on on your course, you should, like, keep it pretty scarce, you know, maybe one one a month or something. Otherwise, yeah, you get into a bit of trouble. But obviously, ideally, wouldn't really do it or need to do it. So, yeah. What, what do you think? What do you think? Well, about I that? mean, I kind of agree with him, but it's like, I don't, I'm not aware of anyone dying because of my absence in a lecture. <laughs> I Yeah, I think... It is the right thing to do, but like occasionally you can't you can't make all of them. But I think Sometimes there is the moral dilemma, like he said, of but I've got an assignment to finish, and the argument would be which is well, work, right? Like that's still uni work. It's still so. your uni work, but the argument would be well, you should have just managed your time better. I like his suggestion of 
keeping it to a minimum of once a month. Yeah. Once a month doesn't strategic feel too bad. Absences. <laughs> yeah, strategic absence. Keep it for like when you've got something really, really exciting that you want to go to, like a concert. Yeah, or not just because you slept in and couldn't yeah. be bothered. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so some helpful intel there. I hope uh, our listeners are working out what they think about that as yeah. well. Do you miss lectures? Would you miss lectures? If so, what's a relevant excuse? We're going to head into our next section now and we're going to be chatting to Jess about evangelism and mission amongst her friends and her housemates and her course mates. Jess, welcome <laughs> to the Student Mission Podcast. How are you doing? Oh, I'm good, thanks. I'm Great. Really good, it's good thanks. to have you on. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. And Jess, we'll hear a little bit later um more about your story and mm-hmm. about uh inviting friends and all that kind of stuff but give people a little bit of an idea about yeah. who you are what you do where where you are where are you you're at university yeah. a little bit about yourself yeah um so i'm jess i'm from not well i'm from brighton but i'm a student in nottingham in my second year i go to uni of um and i do english um t- what's your favorite book um Oh, <laughs> but that's such really a broad question. I really hate question. that question, but on, I do really like Shakespeare, actually. Really? Yeah. Oh. Why? I, I just find him quite interesting. As yeah. a person. He's actually, like, quite modern. Like, oh, okay. he's quite funny. Okay, but, funny guy. Yeah. Well, I, I actually really like Shakespeare. Yeah, I mean, Shakespeare has written comedies, but I don't know if I've ever laughed at... It's probably a bit over my head. Yeah, maybe I need to understand like Shakespeare, Shakespeare but, comedies, like yeah. A Midsummer's Night Dream. I'm that like, makes me laugh out loud. Like I would read it and laugh out loud. You're clearly way smarter than I am. No, though, well, that I is like just f- a bit weird <laughs> of me. No, but just reading Shakespeare and laughing. Well, that's what he intended. It shows that's how good he, he is, doesn't it? So, it's so I can just imagine you sat in the library, just chuckling away to yourself. I was like, "What are you doing? Watching your TikTok?" No, it's just Shakespeare. Yeah, Shakespeare. <laughs> you can't beat the classics. Yeah, the classics. <laughs> it still holds up. Yeah, it does. I heard that Lion King is based on Shakespeare. Did you know that? I actually did. Yeah, it's Hamlet. Apparently, Lion That's King sick. is Hamlet. Yeah, because it's like the uncle. There you go. Spoiler: the uncle. That's know, the only Shakespeare the I know. The Lion. And then the Lion. goes away, <laughs> then returns, and then he's like the ghost of the father. I don't think I've read Hamlet, but I've watched Lion King. So you do know Shakespeare. <laughs> that went way too deep. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's another one. Uh, there's the film with Amanda Bynes in it. She's the man. She's the man, yeah. It's also based on Shakespeare. Yeah. Don't know which one. I can't remember which one either. Anyway. That's based on Shakespeare. It yeah. really is. Very loosely. That's obviously. how good he is, though. <laughs> that's all, yeah. That we're not, we've not been original enough to think of something else. No. Yeah, that we have to take. Absolutely. Everything's based on Shakespeare. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, great. Anyway, enough about Shakespeare. Yeah. Um, it was meant to be about me. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Let's <laughs> yeah, bring it well, back it's actually to about about Shakespeare. Me. <laughs> okay, Shakespeare. <laughs> Um, Jess, tell us a little bit about your story, about your journey yeah. of faith. Um, yeah, how have you got to the, this point today in terms uh-huh. of your faith in God and your relationship with Him? Yeah, so I'm 20 now, but I was five years ago. Um, my dad left. Um, so my mom and dad, they're so great, but they had a really rubbish marriage. Mm. Um, I think if I look back, I also like, I like was expecting that from a young age, like, okay. oh, I think my think my dad's gonna leave but like mm. always wishing I like, hope that's not true and so actually at 15 he did leave um and like got married to some well actually recently got married to someone else but like left live with her um and so 15 I was like heartbroken I like loved my dad so mm. much um which is probably quite good <laughs> I loved him but um so that was really sad and then my mom was distraught too mm. and one of her friends um invited her to the local church in Brighton. And so me and my brother, I've got a twin brother, he um, came, we went along too and like was embraced and in the worship and in the talk, like I didn't know what to expect, but I just remember, and I go back to this like feeling a lot. I do remember feeling like really seen by God Mm. in that. That's where he found me, um, was in that time. Yeah. And like he became like my father yeah um, like that felt really real to me like that was the first thing I felt like oh, I, f- I feel you as a father god um yeah. and so like that's where my faith began and mm. so like I go back to that and like mm. that's where he like found me and like oh yeah I hold on to that yeah. so that's kind of where it started Oh, amazing. So, yeah. amazing and like what a time of healing like the perfect yeah. moment I suppose absolutely for God to step in yeah and to almost did you feel like it, it was kind of a healing process for mm. you and your mum being involved in church and I guess having that community yeah. around you yeah I find it really kind of God that like mm. 
he like waited till then mm. um and like he like chose to call me then like at the mm. worst, worst like I would say that's probably the worst time of my life mm-hmm. so far I haven't lived for that long but um and but he chose then and like a lot honestly loads of the like pain was taken away mm. in that time and I really feel like my life could have been like one way or the other yeah like I was like 15 16 like yeah but like he chose then mm. and there was a lot of healing in that and especially for my mom too mm. like seeing her in church and my brother it's like it's been really special like so it was so it was so bad but so much came out of it like I wouldn't change it yeah, yeah wow yeah and had you ever been to a church before that period of time or was it completely new or had you just been yeah. going for an occasion or no it, it was it was really new I think we'd been like when we were really young to like maybe some kids church stuff but <laughs> yeah. like yeah. nothing like memorable mm. so it was it was completely new and it was like nothing like I expected so yeah it was really cool yeah yeah and how did that fit because I guess you're in a place where you you were maybe looking for yeah like healing for maybe, sure or restoration yeah. so was it like skepticism going in or were you kind of like I'm just I need something yeah or like we we need a place we need a place I think it was like my mom really felt like she didn't know kind of what to do with like the situation and we we needed a place and she like I think it was like a, a bit of death race she's like yeah mm. I'll go I'll come to church with you to her friend yeah and like and we just went and I don't think I was skeptical I was like oh well if mum wants to go I'll go <laughs> yeah like Great. yeah yeah so it was it was good oh that's amazing yeah amazing and then you uh are in your second year of university yeah how was it coming to university in your first year uh-huh. in terms of your faith what did that look mm. like I know some people leave home and they're like great it's a time my faith is being solidified a lot of people leave home and they're like mm, I can kind of work out what I'm doing and, yeah and suddenly there's a load of things that are thrown on you yeah um or things to do with university or culture and you're kind of like oh uh, I don't know how to navigate this what did it look like for you yeah. when you came to university in terms of your faith and church in that first uh-huh. year well when I became a Christian when I was like 15 it was really it's really interesting how I quickly became shameful of like the identity of a Christian like okay. I had like a really cool like encounter with God and I was like oh I really want this but actually like to my friends at school I really quickly developed like oh I don't know how much to share with yeah. this mm. like quite sh- like quite like scared and shameful about that and I definitely like carried that to uni in mm. my first year I was like I don't know like how people were going to receive me um or, like these new friends that I made oh I'm just going to church like what's that mm. going to look like and like pretty quickly like preconceiving people's like responses when actually like you kind of fear fear the worst don't you and actually it never it never really is as bad as you like think it will be but I definitely came into uni with like a fear and like a shame like I've got to hide that about me and so I think that did I kind of like first year didn't look like uh, I was like sharing the gospel in my halls (laughs) yeah I was I probably looked quite like the world to a lot of people yeah um I was just absolutely the same for yeah. me I think that's true for a lot of people yeah. as well like you do come to university where there's like these preconceived notions of oh no how are people going to re- respond to yeah. me how are they going to receive me or whatever mm. and then um you're like they're going to hate me especially when yeah. you're trying to make like new friends yeah. or like they're just going to want anything to do with me like I kind of I remember I, I kind of dreaded telling people yeah. I was a Christian to begin with I was like oh no it's kind of like I have to reveal something about myself yeah. and then you're like how are they going to respond yeah. I remember one of my friends the guy I lived next door to when I told him I was a Christian he was like oh you're not are you <laughs> Wow, <laughs> was like, that was as bad, as bad as it got yeah. but, I, they, but over time that change became more yeah. comfortable yeah for sure so, so what was the change for you in mm. terms of like so you, that's kind of well, actually, first year, reflecting the world maybe yeah. more than you wanted to reflecting or, the world more than I wanted to like being like oh, I really do want to like I don't want to be like looking like the world I really do want I hope people can see in me mm. a bit of Jesus but like um but I came to uni two of my best friends from home for, from school as well so they're not Christians but I came to they were we were in the same hall um so like even if I wanted to pretend I didn't go to church yeah. like they were gonna they bait know. that out with yeah. me anyway yeah. so like it's probably quite good because I had to go in like oh I'm yeah. just going to church and like yeah like 
yeah, so I couldn't pretend even if I wanted to. Yeah, yeah. Um, but no, I kind, I kind of like you just do say, don't you? And yeah. like, yeah, hope people don't yeah. take it the wrong way. Yeah, and that is just unusual. They're like, okay, yeah. Cool. It's almost like this club, yeah. you get a society you're going to on a Sunday night yeah, it, <laughs> or a Sunday yeah. morning. <laughs> yeah. It's so true. It is a weird one because you like, you can, j- someone said, uh, is it at Fusion we say, try and name your, drop Jesus within the first 24 hours of being at uni. But I'm always like, does that then make me look really intense? Because yeah. a lot of the time people are interested in your life mm. because they've built up a relationship with you already. Yeah. So it's really bizarre starting uni and being like, how much do I tell these people yeah. about who I am before I've built a relationship with them? But I kind of need to tell them who I am in order to build a relationship yeah. with them. So you end up in this vicious cycle. Um, but I think the advice is good to name drop Jesus in the first yeah. 24 hours. In some yeah, I think it's just get it out early. It's makes so it true. Easier. I feel like most of it's mental as well like in like mentally I'm like oh they're gonna think this gonna think that yeah and like yeah you build up so much yeah actually it's all just fear and mental barriers isn't it the, yeah, and lies so that we're is. believing that aren't necessary we're saying people's no for them or just exactly. assuming the worst which isn't you know yeah. obviously yeah kind of what the devil's trying to do yeah. as well <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, it's so true. And things shift a little bit for you between your first year and your second year. So yeah. um, we'll chat again a little bit later um, mm. about some of the invitation that you have been doing in terms of your friends. And clearly you've managed to get past that fear a little bit yeah. or that guilt or that shame yeah. around being a Christian and around who you are. So what changed in your second yeah. year? Can you put your finger on it? Is it a gradual process? Is it something that you've been doing? Mm. Is it to do with your relationship with God? What what changed um, this year yeah. to make things different? After my first year, I remember like nearing, like this time last year, like nearing the end of like the year and like leaving. I remember thinking like, I'm going to go home and sort and like, I'll leave everything that I did in the first year at uni and like yeah. it won't it won't affect me and like I could try and work it out but I remember coming home and like it all of the baggage that I was like had built up over there came with me mm. and like coming home in summer I was like oh like the stuff that I've like been doing or like yeah I just like it's really heavy like mm. it's, it was weighty and actually I brought like it had more of an impact on to, on me than I realized yeah. um and like coming came home in summer and actually felt really sad and mm. like I don't want to live like that anymore and I think like coming home was like quite a rea- like a reality check it was mm. like you can't you can't live one way at uni and then come home and try and you can't live two lives can you mm. and like the the stress and the how tiresome that is yeah like it all came like crashing down a bit and I was like actually all of this had more of an impact on me. I feel quite sad, actually. Yeah. I don't want to, and I don't want to bring this into my second year. And actually, like, I, I, lo- like, I love you, Jesus, more than this. And I do want the people that I'm friends with to see you. And yeah. so, like, I, that's what I wanted to bring into mm. second year. And so I think that was the, like, shift. It was something, um, yeah. And it was like, I'm going to be more intentional here. Yeah. So that's, like, kind of the attitude I went into mm. with yeah. second year with. Yeah, that's really cool. It's almost like you going back to where you first found faith reminded yeah. you of like, yeah. we always talk about going back to your first love and like yeah. when you first find that relationship with Jesus. Yeah. It's amazing and it's brilliant and yeah. it's new and it's exciting. And sometimes I think we all need to be reminded of mm. of what that was like because yeah. we sometimes forget or we take it for mm. granted or you end up just mm. going through the motions of life basically. Yeah, it's so Whereas it's really cool that you went back home mm. and you almost had this new lease of life. Did your mum notice? Did Was it a private thing? Did you chat to her about it? Was it was it a noticeable thing? Yeah, I think, I ch- yeah, I chatted to my mum quite a lot. Yeah. Um, chatted to an old youth pastor quite a lot. Yeah, handy. And like, um, yeah, that was that was really helpful. I think you have to do it with people, don't you? Yeah. Um, and like let people speak into you. Yeah. Um, but also it had to be like a moment that I wanted, I don't want to live like this anymore. Yeah. And like, I can see where this is heading me and like, actually. Yeah. 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 You have to make that decision for yourself, yeah. don't you? And there is like a, there is, it's really vulnerable, isn't it? Yeah. To be in that place. And then there's, then there's almost like the fear of what other people think, but then the fear of judgment from people yeah. who know you. I know. And then you're like, it's, as you say, it's that awful place. in. But actually it's like, oh, people Pretty much most people have been in a situation yeah. like those things where we, because we're all imperfect and, yeah. and do stuff, right? So, yeah, so I think actually being in that place, like, oh, these people 
do love me regardless mm. it's like quite a helpful reset and as you say like coming back to that first love yeah which is really important yeah yeah and so you've been inviting friends along to church um yeah this second year and I guess lots of people will be thinking that's great that you're doing that but that's probably just because you're a crazy evangelist and like <laughs> you're just going out and you're just yeah. chatting to anyone and you're on the streets mm. and you're laughing at people. Shakespeare laughing yeah. at Shakespeare <laughs> yeah. inviting people to church <laughs> and um would you say that you're a natural evangelist what what does that look like for you? Like, definitely not. <laughs> I mean, like, I came to uni, like, scared to, like, name drop Jesus. So yeah, definitely yeah. not. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so how do you tell people about Jesus yeah. then? Because I think we the, the other people we've chatted to on the podcast say the same. And they're like, mm. I'm not a natural evangelist. But I think we were chatting earlier and saying, mm. actually, it's just something you grow in. It's something yeah. you get a heart and a desire for. Yeah. And I wonder if a lot of what God was doing in that summer before you came back mm. for your second year is preparing your heart and getting you yeah. ready because actually we better reflect Jesus when to other people and they notice more yeah. when actually we're in the right place with Jesus and actually yeah. we've brought things to him, we've put things at the foot of the cross, we've mm. allowed him to transform our hearts and our minds yeah. so that actually you started September as kind of a new person yeah. ready to go for it. Um, so yeah, what does it look like for you in terms of inviting friends along to church? Yeah, yeah. Um, it kind of just looked like friendship and yeah. um, be, like being friends with people. And I think one thing was like, I, like I was good friends with people in my first year and like that carried on into my mm -hmm. second year. And one friend from uni came and stayed with me that I met at uni, Josie. She came and stayed with me at summer. And so me and Izzy, the friend that I came to uni with, she came and stayed with me and then we like would meet up and um, when she was in Brighton and um it, there was she was here on a Sunday and I was like okay I'm going to church um you can come with me or you can or you can go to Izzy's or Izzy could come or we could all just go to church and um and Josie was like I think my mum will think I'm a good friend if I come to church so I'm gonna come to church with you yeah um and like she was not interested in at all in my first year like yeah. I wouldn't say she was that interested and like would never ask any questions yeah. um so like that's where Josie was at and she was like but she was like I think my mom will think I'm a good friend if I come to church with yeah, you so it was like I'll come and like Izzy ended up coming too and like went to church and then we like I was driving we were driving back and I was like oh like how did you find it she was like I really liked that mm. and then like I was thinking in my head like oh I should probably try and have another conversation like see what she really thought and like tried again and like but it didn't really come of anything and then came back to uni in September and was like, I just had this feeling, I know I need to invite her again. Yeah. Um, and I went to hang out with her, like probably on like one of the first days back at uni in second year. And she, and like, I knew I was wanting to invite her. And she was like, Jess, can I, but she was like, Jess, can I come to church with you on Sunday? No way. <laughs> so like, I could, like she asked me. Yeah. Um, and that, that was just from her like staying at mine. Yeah. And like. I've, I was reading recently in the Gospel of John, Jesus literally says, like, come and see. Yeah. And that's, like, how the disciples are, like, yeah. like get to know Jesus. He's, like, come and see, and they spend the day with, like, yeah. day with him. And like, I think that's what I want to be good at is, like, like, just come and see. Yeah. The friendship thing is so key, isn't it? Because I think, yeah. well, we, we did, like, the, I think we've mentioned it before, but doing, like, a survey where one of the questions we've asked students is, would you try church if a friend invited mm. you? And it's like 74% of students say yes. And I think for a lot of those people are saying yes, it's probably because they're like, oh, they do want to try. But it's also like, I just want to be a good friend. Yeah. So yeah. it's coming from that place. And then actually yeah. that opens up something else, which is like really uh -huh. interesting. Yeah. So she she just came and like, and now she's a Christian. <laughs> so cool. And it's so, <laughs> so cool. cool. Yeah. It's amazing. I like and it, I, I don't feel like I did anything like big with that. It yeah. was like, and like she wouldn't have come if we hadn't been friends for that whole year before. Yeah, yeah. And like, I think with some of my other friends that have come to, it's like, it's only been out of that, I think. Yeah. Of like, well, they, they know me and they, they, they probably, I hope they trust me and like. Yeah, they like you. They like me. <laughs> yeah. 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 And we actually get on. Yeah. And like, we're good friends. And so if Jess, if Jess has asked me. Like, yeah. yeah, I probably will come. Yeah. And and there may well be lots of people thinking, oh, like, I, I never really think I can do evangelism. Like, I, I don't really know even where mm. to start. But 
to think that you can just start with your friendships around you yeah it's amazing and really yeah. encouraging and yes there's fear to get over yeah. yes there is like a worry there of is. like what if I can't answer mm-hmm. all their questions but to start with the friends around you is the perfect place to start for someone if they're yeah. wondering how they can start inviting their mates I heard someone say once like um the importance of investing in their lives as well as them investing in your life yeah so if uh, I was constantly inviting someone to church every week and they've invited me to their fencing match or yeah. something they're really fascinated in, but I'm not bothering to go and invest yeah, in their life. So then actually, why are they going to come to church? Because yeah. I'm not showing any interest in their interests yeah. or the things they're passionate about or the things mm. that make up their lifestyle. Mm. And I think that's what's really key about the way that you do friendships mm. is you invest in them. Like yeah. you love them. They're your yeah. friends. Of course you want, you're yeah. interested in their life. And so of course they're interested in your yeah. life. And I think maybe a really key part of uni is making sure you are creating strong foundational Mm. friendships and relationships with people outside of the church because otherwise where are you going to start and you get you get stuck and really interesting what you're saying about the survey even last week and the week before on camp I was on campus in Lincoln and in Nottingham chatting to students about Jesus Mm. using the survey and it is fascinating how many are like Mm. oh yeah I'd go because I want to support my mate or I'd go because I I'd be their like emotional support or like you know I want to show that I care about them Uh or I want to be open to different different kinds of spirituality and this generation are really open to different kinds of spirituality but we want to direct them towards Jesus and so um, absolutely it's really fascinating how many are really interested and how many would go because you've mm. invested in a friendship with them and that's the way that you're doing it and yeah. it's really powerful and amazing and Thank hopefully you. an encouragement to people listening as well. Yeah, You invited a friend to a beer and burger night in September. Yeah. Well, how did that start? Yeah. What did it look like? What happened off the back of it? Yeah, so that actually was Josie as well. Yeah, She's brilliant. coming up quite a lot. Yeah, we love nice Josie. Yeah, yeah, so um, yeah, it was like, a student beer and burger. Yeah. So I think the like brief was like literally invite all your mates. Like who doesn't want a free beer and a burger? And so nice. like invited Josie. Um and like literally went into the church and someone also called Josie approached approached uh, approached us. I didn't know Josie, she was a fresher. And she was like, Oh, I recognise you guys, you're friends with my friend Meg. Um and then Josie who just approached us had done a gap year but went to school with Megan and so she was like oh I've seen your Meg's Instagram and then Josie and Josie like went off spent the whole like evening together and um and then like I was like off doing whatever and then we like me and Josie my friend Josie walked back and Josie was like oh like Josie Josie just told me how much Jesus loves me and like gave me the gospel basically she like he she gave her the gospel and like Josie was like I can feel something opening up inside of me yeah and I was like that's the Holy Spirit Josie yeah. and she was like it is the Holy Spirit <laughs> and like that was like the first like oh like God's doing something in front yeah. of me and I'm not doing anything really I'm just like the link between her like coming and then God does something yeah because yeah, I think you know you've obviously done the invitation but then there's yeah. someone else who's come and shared the gospel yeah. so it's like that you know, you've you've not mapped that out. Like no. you've not teed <laughs> yeah. up this other Josie to be like, no, your namesake's Can coming. You Let's come and you know, share this. Yeah. Like, and I I I think when we think about inviting friends to church, is sometimes like we we kind of have a vision of how we'd ideally want that yeah. to go, and we're probably quite like maybe treading on eggshells a bit. I mm-hmm. don't know. Maybe I I think I am I sometimes am, yeah. like I want them to have experienced something the way I would want yeah. them to experience it. Mm. But that's maybe our agenda as opposed to God's. Yeah. So because I don't think you probably would have had this person she doesn't know. Yeah, come and come and share the gospel. You'd <laughs> no. be like, whoa, at least yeah. you know, wait. Yeah. A yeah. Term Ask or her what a favorite night out. Was. <laughs> yeah, just don't, don't tell her Jesus loves her. Yeah. <laughs> that, it's but so like, true. Yeah, it, that's so true. And then, but that's not what God has in yeah. mind. And then, like, he's just gone and like through the Holy Spirit, yeah. and like it's just opened up something, and that's allowed uh, yeah. you. It just brings a different part of your. Fr- relationship that's so true do you feel like that takes the pressure off as well because i think sometimes like, I, i'm solely responsible for like my friends faith yeah. but like when you like, oh actually no we're doing this as a community i'm just the way in the yeah invite. i think i can feel like i'm like really responsible but actually like if i've have had a, i've had like a group of friends come to church and i've actually like gone off and done like gone and talked to someone and like i've watched people from the congregation come and like chat to them because they're new and like mm. embrace them and like that was really cool that's really cool because like 
that's what the church is really, isn't yeah. it? And yeah. like that's been so, so nice, like yeah. seeing them embraced by other Christians. Yeah. yeah, something I really regret about when I was at uni 10 years ago <laughs> uh, was like how I never, I don't, I think I tried to keep my Christian friend group kind of subconsciously separate yeah. from my yeah. friends who weren't Christians, but I'm like, why should I be the only yeah. like witness? Like when I think about like why might like yeah. actually by just having a number of different uh-huh. uh, connecting with other people, those friendships that can also blossom. Yeah. Like, it's just a much richer experience it's than so true. like reflecting Jesus and like. I mean, I I can't speak, but I imagine those people who've come now. It's like they've got a whole new friendship yeah. group who they For like sure. just as much. Yeah, yeah, it's so true. Um, and like I would definitely like I think before I came to uni, I would keep that quite separate. And, like, wouldn't let them know too much about each other. Yeah. Uh, And that also made it really easy for me to be, like, two different people in two different spaces. Mm. Um, And that's something I didn't want to do. Yeah. And probably did quite a bit in my first year. But actually, like, having different people around, like, my kitchen table at my uni house and, like, having Christian friends and also, like, not Christian friends, like, at one table, like... It's been really cool and really rich and, like, so so nice for me to watch them get on. Mm. Be like, oh, you you guys can get on. Like, you can come and, like, this is normal yeah. too. Yeah. Um, so tell us a little bit more about that. So you've been inviting people for dinner on yeah. a Sunday before church. It's really interesting. In, mm. At the Belfry in York, their students as a group in their small groups have put on banquets where they invite their non-Christian wow. mates over for dinner as well. So it kind of seems to work. Um, but where where did the idea come from? What does it look like? Um, yeah. how, how does it work? It didn't look like... I, it wasn't really an idea. I just think dinner. Like, it <laughs> was just like... It was just like... Like dinner, and I, I, lo- I love people being in the uh, in like that in the house and like in my space. So it's like, yeah, jo- like Josie was coming, um, and then she lives with like an- one other of our friends, Martha, and so Martha would just come for dinner, yeah. and then like that's ended up with Martha now coming mm. like coming to church when she wants to come to church, and like, um, and like my housemates will like be at the table when we're having dinner, and like it kind of just grown, and like at some sometimes it'd be like ten people, like and we'll just have like pasta at the table, and wow. like some people won't come to church, but some people like yeah. will, and like that's like that's just grown, mm. and um, it hasn't looked extravagant. It's like looked like people eating like some rubbish pasta I've made, and then like I'll go and cl- clear it up, yeah. and like, I can hear them chatting about church, and I'm not even there, mm. like I'm not orchestrating it, mm. and like, and like yeah, my ears are burning, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, but like in like a cool way, like they're yeah. they're chatting about it, like, and um, having them friends all together has been really special. So do they yeah. know each other, or is it kind of a group of a mix of people that you know, and you've kind of helped them to get along by having a meal? I think maybe I initially been the link but like they've all become, but now they're all they've friends. become friends yeah. yeah that's amazing isn't it because it's like just that invitation yeah and on grand uni environments like a really relational environment so it yeah. happens a lot quicker but you've just opened up so many yeah like the chain reaction is kind of yeah. like the ripple effect of just like oh, do you want to come for dinner and yeah. what that creates is so it's so yeah. true and like also seeing Josie like do this like she like does the same she's like oh do you want to come for dinner like so good. and the different people that have come because of her yeah um which is just so cool yeah i love that it's so normal as well you're like it's pasta it's around <laughs> the table it's in a student house yeah it's like, really dirty yeah it's dirty it's normal yeah. but then you're just like actually i think so is jesus ministry right they're yeah. having fish on the beach they're yeah. having bread and fish mm. wherever and you're kind of like i think so much of Jesus' ministry was surrounded by food, right? Mm. It's it's a way of allowing community to build, but allowing amazing conversations to happen. Um, yeah. And what you're doing is so reflective of Jesus. Mm. That's what I, exactly what I imagine he, mm. he would do. So how do you then invite them to church? Because people might be thinking, that's great, but if I invited my rates around for dinner, I, I wouldn't know what to say. Yeah. I wouldn't know how to then convince them to come to church. Yeah. What does it What does it look like? What do you say? What do you do? I mean, it's like, oh, I'll come for dinner. Um, like, I, I'm going to go to church after, and if you want to come, you can come. Yeah, okay. But, like, you can also still come for dinner and not come. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, like, I remember, like, a friend that came, like, to for dinner in church a week before and then I was like do you want to come to church she's like no and I was like and I was like oh should I still invite her for dinner and I was like oh do you still want to come for dinner mm. and like she still wanted to come for dinner and like 
I think like still spending the time with her was like really special and yeah. like can like continuing that yeah so I think that that's it yeah yeah because I think even though it's not like the Sunday service yeah. that's still like an extension of church right yeah those people are still having those conversations that's so true. and like was it is in Acts 2 where the disciples like they break bread together yeah. and it's like mm-hmm. in fellowship and the Lord like it's done around the dinner yeah. table yeah. and so yeah I think even that hospitality of just mm. I mean even if it's just like pasta with you know your Tesco yeah. own brand so true but Tesco <laughs> shout out out of that yeah. <laughs> like, just then it's like but that still sh- yeah. shows like i care for you and i value yeah. you and i want to like, sit at the table yeah. yeah yeah how have your friends kind of found that as like because you, you've done that for like quite a while i imagine now yeah like, how they like, find in that rhythm and like how do they see that yeah um i think it, well like one of my housemates ruby um she's like oh who's coming around tonight <laughs> like on a sunday like yes. who's coming around and like it hasn't always looked like the same people and it's not like everyone knows to come to Jess's at this time yeah. and then like she's going to church and we could come like yeah. it is like I still have to make the effort and be like do you want to come around every, yeah. every week and say that but um yeah it, it's like it's looked di- different every week yeah. but I think it's always been like an open invitation mm. to come in yeah I love that it it just makes evangelism and talking to people about church and Jesus so normal yeah. and so relational and just yeah. a part of Friendship, yeah. a part of true friendship is being open and honest about mm. every part of your life, including church and including mm. faith. So um, it's a great idea. And mm. I think other people should try it across the country yeah. because there is something about the hospitality and the generosity that mm. reflects Jesus. And then being able to know that you're walking into a church with other people if it's your first yeah. time is quite helpful as well because sometimes that's people's biggest fear is like I don't even know what it'll look like I don't know what yeah. to wear I don't know where I'm going <laughs> to sit someone asked me yeah. recently do I have to sing and do I have to wear a certain outfit and like am I allowed to come if I haven't been invited and you're like whoa yeah. there's so many things there that are just misconceptions that, sure. that people believe um, or stuff that's in films or mm. stuff that they've heard or stuff that they've seen um, so yeah really exciting we yeah, well, I was just saying, like, it's good that them coming to dinner isn't conditional to them coming to church. Yeah. So they don't, yeah. you've not it made it totally uh-huh. easy going. Like for those who then do want, like, mm. yeah, I'll come to church as well. How do they find, you know, like that's but how along. do they find that? And then how do they find going? Like what's, you know, that kind of like look like? Um, like any like particular like r- fruit from that? Um, it's like different. Like but some people have come once and then like not, haven't yeah. come again. But like... Um, I think know that the offer's there. Yeah. Um, but then it's also looked like people coming every week and, like, that's been really special. And it might not have looked like, to me, maybe, like, oh, they're a Christian now, but, like, they're still coming every Sunday. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and that's pretty cool. And, like, Izzy, like, one of my friends, she was, like, um, might be, like, working on a Sunday. And she was like to me, Josie, guys, I might not be able to come to church with you. Oh. And, like, I don't think, like, in my head, I'm like, she probably doesn't even want to come every week. Yeah. Like, she probably doesn't want to come and I'm a bit annoying asking her. Yeah. But, like, actually, she really does want to yeah, come. Yeah, really. And, like, I think what you said earlier, like, we say people no for them all the time. Mm. Yeah. And, like, we just stop doing that. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. we do it all the time. Yeah. Like, out of fear or out of, like a bit of embarrassment but like people do want to come yeah. and like we get something out of it the Holy yeah. Spirit meets us like why not them yeah, yeah. amazing and you've had around 15 15 of your friends come along to a student night yeah um, which is really cool really yeah. exciting that's the dream as a student worker I'm thinking yes come I on. would love it if like <laughs> my students brought 15 of their yeah. mates to come along to a student night and to a student evening mm. and you were doing the talk what, we, what were you talking on yeah so um I was talking about my testimony, so I was talking about myself. <laughs> that's okay. Um, but, um, that's allowed. That's allowed. <laughs> um, like a week earlier than student night, student passed phone, I was like, oh, would you like to, like, we really would like you to share something um, at the student night. And when I was in college, I remember writing in my journal, if I ever share my testimony at church, I want all my, like, I want all my friends to yeah, be there. And like, it was just like a, like a prayer that I had. It wasn't like I'm, going to say to someone can I share my testimony so I can do this like it was just like I really hope that if I ever I have the opportunity to do that like people will be there and it's always been like something in my head like that Mm. that I would really hope would happen at some point but I hadn't told anyone that like Mm. it was just something I'd written down like a few years ago and um 
so when Sam phoned me and was like, do you, like, do you want to like talk at church? He wasn't like, you have to share this. I was like, oh, I think I'll share this, like my testimony. Um, that's what I felt like to share. And and I knew that it was maybe that opportunity of like, oh, well, I have to, I want to invite people then. And yeah. like, it was at student night, so it was like, it was just students. It wasn't like a normal church service. Um, maybe it looked a little bit similar, but it wasn't, it was all mm -hmm. students. We had like food before. Um, and so just put in a few different group chats, like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm talking at church. Um, I love that. Like, bring up the chats, which ones? Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> I was like, really like had like 10 people in each. Just like, oh, I'm speaking at church. Like, I would love if you guys would come. Yeah. Um, you get a free dinner. Um, <laughs> and like, you'll probably know a few people in the room. And like, most people were like, yeah, some people were like, oh, I can't. But like, most people was like, yeah. Um, and so they came. And then one of my, also my good friends, Eden, who's a Christian, she invited all her housemates. Mad. So like, I didn't Crazy. invite them. Yeah. She invited them. Like, so all good. of them came. Um, so yeah, there was just like a room full of like, like they had to put a new table out for the dinner. That's amazing. Like that That's was really cool, cool actually. <laughs> like like there, had, there was a new table that had to yeah. come out because like there wasn't enough seats. And so there was just like a room full of That's like amazing. people that had never, maybe never been to church or like yeah. had just been invited to come. And so yeah. that was really cool. And like so kind of God that like all of that past, like my first year, like mm. that didn't look like evangelism. It didn't like, look like me living out my faith, but still... Like he saw fit for me to do that a year yeah. later and like mm. have all of these people come to church and that you wrote that down. Yeah, and well. like yeah. I wrote that down That's... before my first year and yeah. like I was really like like seventeen or eighteen and I was like, Oh I do really want to share that and I've written yeah. that down and God saw that and was like, mm. You will do that. Oh, so encouraging. Um and like C.S. Lewis wrote like the longest way round is the shortest way home and like mm. I think that looks like my life and probably like a lot of people's life mm. is like you go the wrong way mm. and, like you do the things that you you didn't set out to do but actually like it, it has ended up in something good yeah amazing. totally and like yeah so having them in the room was pretty cool so, yeah. so all these people are in the room and yeah. you're sharing your testimony yeah so how, like, how does that go down yeah, so, yeah, so we had food before and then there was worship. And so, like, I was just, like, the whole time I just had my heart in my mouth, like, oh, I'm just going to have to go off and <laughs> speak in front of everyone yeah. now. And, like, all of them are on the front row. Like, they're oh, like, God. oh, are we going on the front? <laughs> um, and so, um, yeah, but it went really well. And, like, just, like, shared my testimony and, like, shared a bit about, like, also, like, coming, like, about me now and, like, Obviously, my testimony was five years ago, but, like, what that also means for me now, like, coming back to my first love. I think that's mm. what I was trying to say is, like, you, like it's always there. Like, this is, like, what I was, like, mm. like, I've come from. And so I shared that. And then there was, like, some ministry time. I think the student pastors were, like, we really want to make some room yeah. for yeah. that and, yeah. like, allow people to respond. Um, and, like, we will be, like, if anyone wants to give their life to, to Jesus then, like, we'll make time for that. And so... Um, I like started the ministry time and I found that so awkward for me <laughs> I thought it was really awkward okay. um, in what way like I was just like I don't know what I'm doing I've never like okay. yeah, orchestrated yeah. a room with yeah. people let's do this yeah. <laughs> but like I felt awkward but actually like like I would look up and like I could see people crying mm. and like like f quite a few of my friends were crying oh, wow. like responding and like and then like Hannah and Sam like they would like they came up and like, I kind of went down and like prayed for a friend um, amazing and then um, afterwards, my friend Eden, like she'd brought her friends and um, one of her friends, Lucy, was there. And you know that feeling, I think we've probably all known it, where you know you should like go up for prayer mm -hmm. and you don't want to. And you're like, oh. And like, but you have to. I think the Holy Spirit like makes you. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, you can't, we're not going to, I'm not going to summon to yeah, go up. Yeah, feel convicted. Yeah, feel convicted. And she was next to Lucy and Eden. And like, Lucy was like to Eden, Eden, I really want to go up and like, give my life to Jesus and she's like I really want to but I'm nervous and then Eden was like oh go, go on Lucy like go for it and she was like a bit of I'm in an and I think it probably went on for a few minutes and then Lucy was, Lucy was like oh F it and like <laughs> but I didn't say F it like I said yes. the F word mm. um, the actual swear word the actual swear word she said um <laughs> And like, but like, that and went up. Is so, I like went up and gave her life to Jesus. <laughs> so like, good, isn't it? But like, that's so, I think that's so cool. <laughs> so that's good, amazing. Like, so funny. 
yeah yeah that was like an awful thing was for. yeah and how have like some of your other friends who were there found that in the aftermath have like follow-up conversations or... yeah yeah well what there was another friend um ella who was like she was crying and like went over to her and gave her a hug and she was like and i was like um and like, i find this nerve i can be like can i pray for you i like i haven't really done it to someone like that isn't in church or like mm. I wouldn't do it probably I haven't done it in my house or anything mm. um and so, so like I was like oh can I pray for you and she did say no she was like oh, no it's okay but she was really crying um and then like haven't had like loads of conversations with her but she said the other day like we were um actually at a swim ball I do swimming at uni um and we were at a swim ball and so the swim the swim girls were at this service and so um when we were at this swim ball we were at the table and we were actually saying one thing we like about each other oh <laughs> awesome like, everyone That's was so probably, wholesome. everyone was probably like getting battered around yeah. us and we were sat there like oh, i really like this about you like at Aww. our table um yeah it's very different some of the balls i was yeah, <laughs> yeah I was gonna and um so, and then Ella, it like got to me and Ella was like, uh, when you were, I spoke about the lost sheep and she was like, when you were speaking about the sheep at church, um, you like, you really made me change the way I view my life. Aww. And like little, co like little stuff like that. She was kind of probably saying in a bit of a passing way and didn't yeah. think too much about it, but like that meant a lot to yeah, me. Yeah, I bet. Like, That's huge. Yeah. So it's cool. Like when you hear things from your yeah. friends. I like. so encourage that. And like, as you say, you've ended your first year feeling like, you know, you said like, it's just feeling a bit shameful, like wanting to change. And then like, could you imagine like maybe less than a year later? Yeah, yeah mad. Where That's it's so like, oh, I'm sharing my story with my friends. Yeah. And yeah, how do you, what do you think God's done in you in that time? Mm. It's kind of like, like the, the journey you've gone as yeah. the sort of stuff's happening around you. And I assume as you've grown in confidence yeah. and stuff. I think like trusting God is like, like when you see God actually doing something in front of you, it's like, oh, wow. Like you, like, it's not actually because of me mm. and like I can do things, but it's actually like you use that God. And like, I think that's been one thing that's been really encouraging is like God uses me. Yeah. Um, and like, even last week I was like, I like even out all, through all of this, like, I've actually found it quite hard to, um spend time with like one-on-one -on -one with god and like just mm. sit and like be in his presence um it's actually been like quite hard for me like to just sit still and like listen to him um that's something that i've like been trying to get better at this mm. like this past year mm. um it hasn't felt as easy as it probably once did and so like last week i like sat on my floor I was just like, I really do want you to speak to me, mm. God. And like, I hadn't done that for a while. And I could, you know, when you feel like you you do need to spend time with God, I was like, I know I need to, like, I want to hear from you. And like, um, like found myself striving again. Yeah, like, that's good. I found myself striving and I was like, I don't want to like, I know that's not what you call me to. Yeah. Um, and like I sat on my floor and I was like, oh, God speaks to me. And I find it quite hard to like sit still and be silent. Mm. But um I just like when I was silent for like even a couple of minutes, I like, felt I like felt God like say Romans thirteen in my head. I couldn't tell you what that verse is off the top of my yeah. head. Yeah. Like if it was another verse, like maybe if it was like John fifteen came in my head, I could tell you what that yeah. was. So I was like, oh, this is quite nice of you, God. Like you're giving me something to like yeah. do. Um, so Thanks. I went and read it. <laughs> like I went and read um, Romans thirteen in the last bit of the chapter. It was like like wake up from, from your slumber and like mm. put aside the deeds of darkness and like put on the armor of light. And like, I took that to small group the next day and I was like, oh, like this is what I've read. Like, um, and like we chatted about it and it was like put on like the clothes of the Lord Jesus Christ. And for me, I read it straight away as like, I've actively got to put on this, like this stuff, like the armor and like actively do stuff um, in order to like, put aside the deeds of darkness like conquer like my flesh um and actually like I took it to my small group and people were like were saying their own like interpretation of that and they were like actually Jesus clothes us and like he puts on his mm. he puts on like a robe on us and like mm. he like clothes us and I think that's what I'm learning it's like he also like clothes me and that's mm. how I um that's where that's like the place I can come from is yeah. like yeah 
a place of like intimacy with Jesus. Yeah, that security and intimacy that allows security. you to mm. just kind yeah. of be invitational and share. Yeah. Share faith. I think as well, like the story part is so powerful. I think sometimes we think our story is quite boring. Mm. I don't know. It's sometimes, or, yeah. or like we kind no, of tend to so like think true. it's, we don't think it's anything too dramatic. Yeah. We think like, okay, it has to be this crazy, yeah. you know, change or whatever. And I think we sometimes forget like, Jesus has done something significant in our yeah. lives and, you know, it's significant for us to, mm. you know, change our life because of it. And actually our friends would be instinctively interested in that as yeah, well. So like so true. the power of sharing our story and our testimony, like mm. why do we have hope? Why do we believe yeah. what we believe? Like yeah. even if that feels like really we, that's become desensitized to us. Yeah, it's so true. It's actually like probably revolutionary to some people. Like even like yeah. we've, if you've grown up in church or been around church, the idea of being like the lost sheep probably uh -huh. feels like quite a... Uh -huh. normal yeah we've heard that all before but yeah. some people haven't yeah and that is as you say that like changed her view of her life yeah yeah it's yeah. amazing yeah so encouraging to see the journey that you've been on the way that god's worked in your life from when you were 15 to then your first year yeah to, it's almost like now god is preparing you again mm. for what he has for you in third year mm. and how he's going to use you yeah. and the things he's going to do. What is your hope for third year? You might not have thought about this yet, yeah. but <laughs> what, what are you hoping God does in you or in mm. your friends um, in your third year when you, when you start that? I think like, like waking up from my slumber, like even if it, it sounds like I've done loads of stuff and like people are coming to church, but I still like, I don't want to like grow apathetic again. Mm. Like I felt quite apathetic towards God in my first year mm -hmm. and like I think we can easily do that and like um but I do I do want people to like come to know him and so I think keeping like keeping the house open like letting people in Good. um yeah but also I've seen him like um respond and like he I can trust him and like I do want to trust him more and like it's not about my striving or like what I can do but actually yeah. like he will use what I like what I bring yeah I think is there anything because you've obviously that inviting people to church yeah. was maybe like something scary now yeah. that's normal is there anything where you're now like this seems scary to uh, me now where I am at the moment but I feel like okay maybe I'll step outside my so, comfort yeah. zone with that is there anything that you're like oh yeah perhaps maybe I'll do that yeah I think maybe like allowing myself to to speak more naturally about Jesus just in every day yeah that still feels a little bit like scary mm. um and like just letting that come up and also like like I said like I've never prayed for someone mm -hmm. um that's not been in church like I, I pretty I would probably pray for my for people that like would receive I think yeah. would receive that and I like, know mm. Jesus but actually like I can also bring that outside of the church mm. and um that feels really scary to me right yeah. now yeah, yeah. but like it shouldn't, it's not impossible, is it? And yeah. like, it shouldn't also be like something that's reserved for yeah. a Sunday. Yeah. Totally. So maybe, maybe. Yeah. Totally. And just, just to finish off, there yeah. might be people listening to this who are like, wow, that's really inspiring. That's really exciting. Yeah. It's amazing what God's doing. Yeah. I actually would love to see my friends come to church, but I genuinely don't know where to start. I don't know what yeah. that looks like. What would you say to that person who's listening? Just like start where you're at, like where, where you are yeah. is like the best way, yeah. best place to start. Yeah. And um, like God's put you there for a reason. Um, and it might not look or feel like it, but he has. And um, step out in that place. Yeah. Even if it's a small step. Really good. Yeah. Jess, great. thank you so much for your time. Thank That's you, okay. Uh, for everything that you're doing to oh. help people come to know Jesus. And uh, we look you. forward to hearing more stories. Oh, thanks, guys. Yeah, thanks. So that was a great interview with Jess. And I just really loved how she was talking about how it just comes from friendship. Like, yeah. that is the source. Like, we don't need to be anything particularly different we're just like we're sharing the same experiences so like the way we invest in our friends they'll want to invest in us and actually that can be a gateway to so much more yeah yeah it's just sure. really encouraging yeah for sure as part of the fusion podcast we also love to share stories yeah. about what god is doing across our nation um and i just want to share one about lincoln which is where i am a student worker we uh, had a student night a few months ago and we decided to use it as a night specifically to step out in boldness in 
mission and evangelism. And so all the students came along to student night. I didn't tell them that we were going to be going out onto the streets, but we had some time of worship. We had some time with a short talk about the importance of mission. And then every single one of them headed out onto the streets of Lincoln in the pouring rain, I might add, to chat with people on the streets and students about Jesus. And we used the Fusion Survey for it. It's a really easy uh, and helpful way uh, to help scaffold how you have conversations about mission and evangelism and about Jesus with other people. And it was really inspiring to see them go out in trepidation, but also excitement and then return with such joy um, and such amazement at everything that God has done through those conversations. But one of the particularly exciting things off the back of it is, first of all, we've started surveying regularly now uh, as a church and as students together, which is really exciting. And the second thing is that one of my students, the day after we had done that, decided uh, she was going on a night out to beer keller and decided not to drink. She decided instead to use the Fusion survey. And so at pre-drinks, instead of grabbing a drink, she grabbed her phone, got out the Fusion survey and started chatting to her mates about Jesus. They then headed over to Beer Keller. And again, instead of grabbing a drink at the bar, she headed out to the smoking area, which apparently... It's where the best conversations happen. Yeah, the most lucid conversations. Craziest. Prime evangelism space. Absolutely. Um, Not great for your lungs, but good for Jesus. So uh, she heads out into the smoking area and again, just starts having conversations with people using the Fusion survey. She used a few of the questions that she remembered to spark a lot of those conversations. And for some of them, she worked through the whole survey. And it was just, she was amazed by the impact that the survey can have. But she was also just excited about the conversations that unlocked with these strangers. She then collected a few people's phone numbers and details and she's been in contact with them since, been inviting them to church. And we're really excited to see what the fruit's going to be of that in uh, the fresh new term. And we hope that loads of students come to know Jesus and come to church off the back of that as well. Yeah, that's so encouraging. Yeah. And like, we definitely encourage using the Fusion Worldview Survey as a way of reaching your friends and and it works in any environment as that shows (laughs) so there we go especially the nightclub so that's all we have time for on this episode of the student mission podcast and if you have a really encouraging story about how you're sharing your faith with your friends or how you're embracing mission where you are at uni then do please send that in to us you can get in contact by emailing hello at fusionmovement.org with your story but uh, we really hope that you enjoyed this episode as much as we did and we'll catch you next time 